series of sermons on Let There Be Light. Text somebody, Let There Be Light. And as soon as the person sitting near you is a Christian, so first practice I say, Let There Be Light. Let be light. You know, I'm saying that only because it's not necessarily everybody in the church is a Christian. Christians are the followers of Christ. Christians are expected to be like Christ. If you check accounts of Acts of, of the Apostles chapter 11, verse 26, it says, And when he had found him, the Spanish was waiting for Paul, he brought him to Antioch. So it was that for a whole year they assembled with the church and taught a great, a great many people. And the disciples were first called Christians in Antioch. So the first place that disciples were first called Christians was in Antioch. And they were called Christians because they were disciples. They were followers of Christ. They were disciples taken from discipline. They were disciplined people. They were like Christ. People saw their heart. People saw their behaviors. People saw the way they do things. And they said, oh, this one, they were like Christ. And so they called them Christians. And we took that name now that we are Christians. But actually, are we Christians? The world today is in chaos. We are the light of the world. We are the salt of the world. If we refuse to shine our light, if we refuse to let our salt, our salt bring uh, sweetness to people's life, the world is in trouble. The world is in great trouble. Jesus said in John chapter 8, verse 12, John chapter 8, verse 12, said, Then Jesus spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. If we are the followers of Christ, we follow Christ, then we must not walk in darkness, we must have the light of life. Moon has no light of its own, but moon radiates and brings out the light from the sun. We can say, oh, I don't have light of my own yet, but our Lord is the light of the world. It's our responsibility to shed the light from our Lord. They did that light to the darkness of this world. Are we doing it? The world is in a big confusion right now, brethren. The world, the, this world is in chaos right now. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 12, from verse 4 to 6, and Jesus answered and said to them, Take it that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Then verse 11 said, The many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. If you are looking for that time, it is now. Check it out. Read the news. So many false prophets. Rumors of war wars. Diseases that very difficult to, to kill. Bacteria, viruses, ravaging people's life. If you are looking for a time that Jesus was talking about, it is now. Disaster of epic proportions. Serious disasters. They are all happening right now before our eyes. Pictures say on high issues. Some dangerous things happening in our time, right now, in our time. And so, if we fail to, sh to shine our light, if we fail to arise and let the glory be seen, then the world is going to continue to be in this great trouble. We are the light of the world. Christians are those that are giving their life to Jesus Christ. They have accepted Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior, and they are committed to that cause. They are disciples. They are his followers. They do that which they had from him. They do that which they read about his words. Are we doing that exactly? <coughs> you see, let me tell you something. You know, when I read the news, it touched my heart. See, the level of immoral lifestyle in this world today is serious. The level of immoral lifestyle is serious. It seems as if people don't even want to allow the word of God to influence their life and their hearts. Serious. You know, I went into uh, the news to see, because I'm going to be talking to you, we say, oh, this, what we're telling us, Pastor, is something we've had before. 
Or you can be saying, oh, this, that, those things happen in those days. So I went to the news to see the current news. To see the issue why we must shine the light. We must let down the light. It's you and me. You and me. You and I must be able to carry the news to the world. Let's shine the light. Let the people see Jesus Christ in us. Christians of these days are sleeping. They are sitting down. They are sleeping. We got to arise. We got to shine the light. If we, if we fail to do it, no one else can do it. So I went to the news to see what is going on in the world today. The recent one that is so new is the issue of this Ashley Madison. It's so new. And according to the news, we are told that about 37 million people, millions, 37 million emails, were found exposed at married people. And, the, and the, you know, the, when I was reading about this, the common saying of Ashley Madison is, Life is short, half affairs. Life is what? Short, half affairs. And what people try to say, popularly say, they will say, life is short, leave it to the fullest. But in Ashley Madison, the website, they say, life is short, half affairs. And do you know, according to the news I read, coming up from Toronto, Canada, the Ashley Madison hack will have a serious effect on churches. According to Ed Stasner, we are told you that today, this Sunday, following these events, as much as at least 400 pastors, deacons, elders, and church staff members may resign this Sunday because they were found, their information were found, their names, their emails were found in Ashley Madison's website. You will think that, oh no, this thing we are talking about is not for churches, it's not for pastors, it's not for deacons. We are talking about married people patronizing this website. And um, according to this news, we are told that in addition to exposure of Ashley Madison's People are even trying as much as possible to exhort people due to this. Now this event is so serious, this case is so serious that it goes across almost every, every unit. Email addresses of US government officials, UK civil servants, and workers at, at European and North American corporations. In Ashley Madison. And I know some of you will have gone to check my email and my name from here. I have a good news for you. I got a wonderful wife. My wife is so beautiful. What else have I looking for? All inside. All inside. I mean, Christians should think about what we do. We are the light. We have to shine the light. Get it on. Take, take the word of God serious. The serious is for life. This is, we're talking of matter that turns on eternity. Eternity. If you are a Christian, you are born again, there is hope for you. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. If you follow Christ, you must, you must abide in the light. He said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. He is the way to God. He told the disciples, let not your heart be troubled. Believe God, believe in God, believe also in me. In that John chapter 14, speaking. He said, in my, I'm going to be there. Don't be afraid. Don't, don't be bothered. I'm going to prepare a place for you as I go to heaven. That why I am going to be also. So eternity is guaranteed in Christ only. So if you're a Christian, you are born again, why will you allow this little short so-called enjoyment to rob you of eternal life? To mess up your family. According to the news, listen to what the police department said in Canada. It's not been confirmed. We are told that two people have committed suicide because of this. Because some people cannot carry the shame all around. And the police officer Evans told the reporter, said the social impact behind this hacking, we are talking about families. We are talking about their children. We are talking about their wives. Can you imagine if your, if your children should discover that you are messing around? 
You are on the news. Your email is there. Your secret has been exposed. There are so many other secrets that have not been exposed right now that people engage their lives in. That if you see them, if these secrets are exposed, you will want to run away from these people. But listen to me very carefully, there is grace for everybody. Mercy is there. God is a God of grace, is God of mercy. If we see come to it, why these things are these things are coming out, we are privileged to listen to this. History will repeat itself if you don't learn from history. If you are doing this, do you know the best thing you can do now is to stop it. It's to stop it. The woman cut in the heart of their doctrine. And the people wanted to stone her based on the law of Moses. And Jesus asked them, if you have not done this before, cast the first stone. And no one could do that. They begin to throw their stones and everybody left. And Jesus looked at the woman and said, where are your accusers? The woman said, they are gone. I said, okay. I also have not condemned you. Go and do what? And sin no more. That's what God is asking us. I am not condemn anybody. We are all standing by God's grace. Grace is God giving you what you don't deserve. Mercy is God not giving you what you deserve. All of us, we are criminals. Everybody. Our righteousness is like a free to life. None of us can get to God based on our own righteousness. None of us. And so grace is the only one, the only, the only thing, the only source that can lead us to God. And grace is God giving you what you don't deserve. The mercy is God not giving you what you deserve. So if you are in, if you are into this, I know that you know when we're talking about actually medicine or this kind of website, it's not the website of one dollar. I don't think it's for poor people. You gotta spend what? M O N E Y. Money. To be able to patronize them. But people still do. And you ask what are they looking for? I'm not finished. Let me go to the next news. As we go to this. There's what we call body system. Body system. We use this in engineering, in uh, an emergency situation, when we are trying to go into a confined area or somewhere very dangerous to have uh, somebody to support you. Police people, they use that. You see them two by two. Immigration people, they talk something, they use that. You see them two by two. So that if you want to get the first one, the second one, they do that attack you, so they can minimize or possibly stop the attack. So this police system, was what a family used in, in, in Florida. They went to McDonald's. This, this just happened recently for the news. Now I'm telling you, the level of immoral lifestyle of people in the world today is beyond alarming. And if we, Christians, fail to shine our light, the world is in trouble. The only way the, the world can see is through you. Because Jesus is Jesus filling the work. As he is away in the world. So body system. This man they use body system. Four of them, the father, the mother, and the two sons. One six years old, the other one seven years old. So they, they ordered their food, they sat down, and they were eating. The young people, they want the, the, the boys, they want to go to the bush. And the parents said, they want to go together. They, are, they were so sure that when they go together, nothing's going to happen. According to the news conservative tribune, so these two, these two brothers, they went in, into this place, into the washroom, this happened in Jacksonville, Florida. So as they went in, after a while, the seven-year-old came back to the prayer to the table. The father quickly stood up, rushed to the washroom. And as he was going to the washroom, met a young man coming out, about three years old, he said, according to the news, coming out. And then he was looking for his son, he went to one of the compartments of the washroom and saw the young six-year-old putting up his pants. And the father thought in his mind that something happened. Then the kid was going down, was going down, was not able to get the man. Eventually, the man was arrested, one of those homeless. And according to the news, the police said something happened. Now, you understand what I'm talking about. The man was not happy. The level of immoral lifestyle of people in the world today is beyond a land. A six year old boy being molested by about 33 years old man. You would think that it's not going to happen. What is this then? You would think the seven year old should be able to protect the six year old. And this is a warning. This is a news for all of us. That it is your responsibility to take care of your children. Amen? Amen? You do not have to commit your children to somebody you don't know very well. What is going on right now is so simple.
Jesus, we got to learn from all these happenings so that it will not happen to any of us. You got a minor in your house, protect that minor. You have the responsibility to do what? To protect that minor. Each time I take my daughter, I tell her how to the doctor, I will tell the doctor, just will tell me everything because it's my responsibility to protect her. I know we come, we come coming for all these uh, short here, short there, this, when I say short there, this and that, I ask them many questions. If when you are going to give my daughter a shot, maybe this when I say something, I will ask you, I don't know that you do this. You don't want to make a mistake, you don't want to put it in the wrong place. If I'm not coming to my family, someone has to do it for me. I want to look at the needle. I want to open it new, let me see. Because I don't want her to blame me when she grows up. We have the responsibility to protect our home. And I know we have to in Jesus' name. Yeah. We have the light of the world. Let that be light. Tell somebody, let that be light. Nothing's going on right there, you know. Christians must have to speak out. Adam and John stayed together. Christians must do what? Speak out. And uh, Janet and, uh, and, uh, and Mary, Christians must do what? Speak out. These are like, we have to do what? Let them be light. We must shed light. We must turn apart. We must never to tell the world that Christ is the light of the world. And after he had finished his own and he ascended to heaven to meet with God, he, he had given up the responsibility. So he can cut down the task he, he, he started. It's your responsibility, it's my responsibility to tell you all that there's only in Christ that is light and we must give the light. The last one I'm going to tell you before I continue this message, I told you this one, this is just part one. This is part one of let there be light. This is part one, this is just an introduction. For the message, you will enjoy this message. I should be able to tell you how we can do it, how we can you know, be the light, the salt of the world. You have heard about this news about Jared uh, Vogel, the, sub, the subway spokesman. You know, the subway, you know, have you heard about it? According to the lady who exposed her, me, exposed him, he said, Middle school girls are hot. He got that from Jared Fogel. This lady was so, I mean, she was so surprised to see a grown up man speaking like this that middle school girls are hot. This man will be telling all these women, all these young girls, the minors, abusing them. Until you know, the lady was wired and then they got all so, so many information about him and the federal agent close up on him and his house was um, you know was rattled and they took so many computers and they found so many serious things in his computer. This this is a millionaire. This is a millionaire. You would think that I mean, when you look at him on the television he looks so normal. He looks so normal. He's someone that you can say oh take care of my daughter since I'm going to hey get to my look I just want to go to the washroom. I don't want to go to my daughter to the washroom to men's school. Can you please stay with me with my daughter? That is the kind of person you think is, is, that you can do that. But according to the news, if you do that, you are in trouble. You are in trouble. The lady said, the woman who exposed her, and the exposed said, Bungle would often visit schools in Sarasota County. This is schools. Looking for those minors. The level of immoral lifestyle in our world today is beyond alarming. And I have no authority to tell you this, that if God fails to judge us in this situation of the world, then God will have to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah. Are you listening to me now? And God is a God of judgment. He will visit us. But God is so patient, so compassionate, slow to hunger. God is giving us opportunity to repent. What he's asking us to do is to do what? Yes. To repent. And we have to carry the news to the world. We have to shine the light to the world. We are the glory carrier. We have to let the world see the light of God in us. We are light bearers. We have to take the light to the world. Let people see Christ in us. In what you do, how you act, how you speak, where you go. Let others see Jesus in us. If we fail to do that, the world is in trouble. No one else can do it. One else is it. No one else can do it. Angels will not come down to do that. If you see angels physically coming to you, you will, you will be afraid. But when you see each other 
we can relate together, we are social beings, we can socialize together. When we do that, we speak the word to the world. It is important to see office, your office as the office of life, to see your life, you know, to see that this life you have, you have to shine, shine the light to somebody. You have to carry the glory to somebody. You have to be the salt of the world to somebody. There are three ways that I put down that we can do this. The three ways that God can use us to be the light of the world, to be the salt of the world, to carry the glory for people to see the glory of God in us. Three ways I have here that we will use to explain this message as we continue. We have to live in the world. We have to live in the word of God. It's not as good as just listening to God's word. It's so important. It's so important that you, your life will live the world. That is, your activities will be according to what you have read, according to what you have heard. Otherwise, all that I'm telling you, what you have known before, what you have heard from other ministers, will just be potential. They will remain potential until we begin to put them into action. Then they will become useful. They are useless if they are just there, not activated. They will just remain like ordinary thing in your life. So we have to live the work. Second, do the works. We have to do the works. You have to be active. There is no time for Christians to relax. We have to do something about what is going on today. Other than praying, we have to go out and speak to people. We have to and in the last, we have to speak the word of God to people. We have to let people see us doing it. In any way you can find yourself. If you are talented in something, use that talent before it is too late. And the third way to do it is we have to fight the war. It's a war. We have to fight the war. It will be a good fight. Christians are in a serious engagement, a combat engagement with Satan. We are fighting. The cause of all the problem is Satan. You know, perverting people's life, telling people that what is bad is good, telling people that what they are doing there will be no problem, showing them what they call the benefits, not telling them the consequences. Do you know the consequences of what people do? Do you know some of these people eventually they will they will be imprisoned? Some will spend the rest of their life in prison. Some the the, the pain that they, they will afford their families is not something you can compare to the enjoyment they thought they, are, they, they, they had in such a very stupid act. If people would have known the consequences of some things and they can understand the consequences of some things, of those choices they are taking, if they can understand that they cannot reverse this and they have no, sometimes no control over the consequences, you think people will do these things? Devil is putting people under bondage to do things that are not normal, to do things that can bring disaster into their families. Devil is doing this. So we, we are fighting a war, and we're going to use this to explain this. Isaiah 16 from verse 1 to 3 will be the main text for this series of sermon. Arise, shine, for your light has fallen, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and give darkness the people. But the Lord will harass over you, and his glory will be seen upon you. The danger shall come to your light, and kings for the brightness of your rising. The Bible is telling us that we must arise. So let me tell you something. You think that these things that are happening all over the world today, war, rumors of war, look at what ISIS are doing. How can somebody cut somebody's head? You think that is normal? How can somebody, because I don't want to follow your religion, then you have to kill me, kill the whole family. How can somebody do that? You think it's normal? How can somebody do what we are talking about? You are married, you are a married person. You have your wife. And then you have to go and register in, 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 in a website to say, life is short, have affairs. How can people do, how can people, you think this is, God is, 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 is getting God on our ways? You think God is being taken on our ways? You think God did not know this is going to happen? God knew it's going to happen. Look at what that verse said in that Isaiah chapter 16 verse 2. It said, for behold, the darkness shall cover the heart and give darkness the people. But God knew it's going to happen and God made provisions for the way of escape. And that provision that God made 
on the way of the escape of the war from the deep darkness. That provision is you, is me. We are the provisions that God has made that people can come out of this dangerous situation, this darkness, for the only darkness shall cover the heart. And deep darkness, the people. It's very important to see your life as a life of life bearer, bearing the light, as the source of the world, as the light of the world, a glory carrier, that we carry the glory. And that's why that book is telling us, as I said, telling us, arise and shine. If we fail to arise and shine, no one else can do it. Only those who ask Christ can arise and shine, I'm telling you. Christ is the only one who is the light of the world. And, and we have to shine the light on the darkness of the world. We must not partake in these things. We must with law condemn this act. Amen? Amen. If you're a Christian, you are born again, you have given your life to Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, it is your responsibility to tell the world that it is wrong. In any way you find yourself, in your vocation, heart, and let, them, let people see that you are a Christian. In, in among your friends, let them see, be proud to be a Christian. Let them see, be bold to tell people who you are. If you are sure of your destiny, tell others, invite others. This place said, the dangers that come to your life, and kings to the brightness of your rising. Do you know what we need for kings? To come to the brightness of your rising? Do you know what it means? If you don't shine your light, you do think people will gravitate towards you? The way to bring people to closer is to shine your light. And that's what this Bible is saying. You must not partake in this. But your light, your light must shed the light to that darkness. It is darkness. All this heart of people, senseless living, war, most of war, you know, all this immoral lifestyle, all these things are darkness. And you are the light to expose that darkness. You see, actually, in medicine, they offer almost four hundred thousand dollars to get those who hack to their website. It's like you want to destroy our business. That if you can help us get whoever hack into that website, we're going to give you almost four hundred thousand dollars, three hundred something, three hundred seventy something, or three hundred eighty thousand dollars. They wanted to give as offer if you can give information that can lead to those people who hack into that website. See what the world is. Is the world has not seen anything. Amen. Amen. This world has not seen. Look, you have to be very careful. Some of you that go around do some rough things, you never know. You never know who's wearing the uh, you know, you know, you know, recorder. You don't know. Anything you put online is for the world. Somebody can tell you we can protect you. You know some people are saying that to those people in Ashley Medicine that they should come to them. They will protect their identity if they can pay X amount of money. That, don't worry. They don't have to protect. We will protect. Pay also some amount of money who will protect your identity so you can continue your lifestyle. Hello. Christians, it's our responsibility to shine light so that kings can come to that brightness. 